I want to share a very powerful word and it's something that we've all suffered with from time to time and this word is going to set you free. It's going to set you free if you pay full attention to it and it's something that I've suffered with and it's something that you uh, suffered with and perhaps still suffering with from time to time. We all go through that and that is the lack of trust and the lack of faith in our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ. I've got a word for you today, a very powerful word, and it teaches us a very good life lesson. And it's from Mark chapter 9, and we're going to start in verse 14. And it's the heading, the, the title headline is, Jesus heals a boy with a unclean spirit. So verse 14, and when they came to the disciples, they saw a great crowd around them and scribes arguing with them. And immediately all the crowd, when they saw him, were greatly amazed and ran up to him and greeted him. And that's Jesus they're talking about here. And he asked them, what are you arguing about with them? And some from the crowd answered him, teacher, I brought my son to you, for he has a spirit. He has a spirit that makes him mute. Now, we know that there's a lot of spiritual warfare going on and has, from what I've just shared with you, uh, demonic spirits can create all kinds of sickness. They can make people where they're not able to speak because of the fear and control. And so we're going to find out what Jesus does and what we can do through this scripture so continue to pay attention and if you've got a notepad and a pen do take notes because this this will set you free it will release you from many things because the word of god sets us all free amen hallelujah what are you arguing about this is what jesus asked them in verse 16 what are you arguing about with them and some from someone from the crowd answered him teacher i brought my son to you for he has a spirit that makes him mute. And whenever it seizes him, it throws him and he foams and grinds his teeth and becomes rigid. So rigid is like he's in a seizure. It's like every bone in his body is, is very rigid and stiff, like a dead person. So I asked your disciples, cast it out, and they were not able to do so. Now I wonder why the disciples were not able to do that and he answered them this is Jesus he answered his he answered this man and he answered the crowd and he said oh faithless generation how long am I to be with you in other words how long am I to be with you how long am I do I have to keep showing and demonstrating my power the same power which I give unto you bring him to me bring him to me that's what Jesus said and they brought the boy to Jesus. And when he saw him, immediately it convulsed the boy. So when the boy was brought into the presence of Jesus, the, de the demonic forces, the demonic forces convulsed the boy. The boy was having a seizure at that time. And he fell on the ground and rolled about, foaming foaming at the mouth that so the child it was com it, once the boy was brought into Jesus's presence the demons thought they would show their power and he would started to foam at the mouth and roll around on the ground have you ever seen anyone who suffers with epilepsy then you'll know fully what we're talking about here especially if they suffer with epilepsy and they have grand mal attacks and uh, I know that from past experience of a family member. So, he fell on the ground and rolled about, foaming at the mouth. And Jesus asked his father, how long has this been happening to him? How long has this been happening to your son? That's what Jesus said. How long has this been happening to your son? And he said, from childhood, from childhood. And it often, the father continued of the child, and it often cast him into the fire and into the water to destroy him. You see, the demons wanted to destroy and kill his son, his child. What does the father of lies do when he comes? He comes to, to lie, steal, 
kill and destroy. And he wanted to destroy this boy and take away his life. That's what he wanted to do. He wanted to destroy the boy. And when the demons attacked the boy, they wanted to, they wanted to make him very sick. They convulsed him. They made him grind his teeth. He was having seizures. He was foaming at the mouth. And they dropped him to the ground. And many times they tried to roll him into an open fire and into water. An open fire to burn him to death and into the water to make him drown. The demons didn't want the boy to live. This had been happening from the boy's childhood. And he tried to cast him into the fire in the water to destroy him. That's what the enemy does. He wants to destroy us all, to destroy him. But if you can, do anything. Have compassion on us and help us. That's what the father said to Jesus. If you can help us, you can imagine his cry. If you can help us, if you can help me, if you can help my boy, if you can help us. Have compassion, Jesus. Have compassion, teacher, upon us. And Jesus said to him, if you can, if you can, you see that statement, if you can, Jesus was amazed at that because this man didn't know who Jesus was. Jesus is God and he came in the flesh. So he was quite taken by surprise when the man said, if you can, ha help us and have compassion on us. If you can, <laughs> he must have been shaking his head. All things are possible for the one who believes. So at first he would have been a bit bewildered, Jesus. If, if I can, of course I can. And all things are possible for those who believe. Isn't that marvelous? And what happened in verse 24? Mark chapter 9 verse 24. Immediately the father of the child cried out and said, I believe, help my unbelief. And when Jesus saw that the crowd came running together, he rebuked the unclean spirit, saying to it, You mute and you deaf spirit, I command you, come out of him and never enter him again. Come out of him and never enter him again. And after crying out and convulsing him terribly, it came out and the boy was like a corpse, so that most of them said, He's dead. Teachers killed him. He's dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him up and he arose. He arose into a normal, healthy human being. And when Jesus took him by the hand, he rose up like a healthy human being, a healthy boy, which Jesus had healed. Jesus cast out the demons. You see, by the power of the name of Jesus, demons cannot, cannot do anything. They're bound. They have to do what Jesus says. So when Jesus said, leave him, they put up a fight. They tried to convulse the boy and make him like dead, but they had to they had to respond to the, the voice of Jesus, the command of Jesus, and they had to leave him. And everyone thought the poor boy was dead because he was lying there like somebody lifeless. But Jesus took him by the hand and he rose him up into life, into life. Isn't that fantastic? You see, when we doubt the power of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, when we are feeling uncertain, when we are feeling fearful, when we're listening to the enemy and not listening to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, then we've got big problems. You see, we are what we think. We are what we think. We are what we believe. We are what we dwell upon day and night. So we have to dwell upon the word of Almighty God. This Holy Bible, this Holy Bible is the word of God. It's the living word of God. Amen. You've got to change your mindset. This thing here, the mind is very powerful. It can make you think fearfully. It can make you feel anxious. It can make you feel full of worry, full of woe. You've got to change the habit of your thinking. Change the habit of your thinking. You've got to start to focus on the word, the living word of God. Amen. You've got to study God's word daily. You've got to pray to our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ, so that your life can be transformed, so that your life can be transformed 
by the one and only true living God, Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. He is the way. What does that mean? Well, he is the way to the truth. And the truth is God. Jesus Christ is God. And when you learn that truth, you are set free and you receive the life. But it takes faith. It takes faith and it takes action faith and action and what do i mean by action by studying god's holy word studying god's holy word until you get that belief the father of the child said help my own belief and he was very timid at first if you can help, have compassion on us if you can help us in other words he didn't know who jesus was he wasn't really a believer. He believed in God. He was a Jew, but his faith was very, very small. And he didn't know who Jesus was. And we need to get to know Jesus on a deep personal level. And we can only do that by, by prayer and by studying God's holy word. Amen. God speaks to us in many, many ways. God speaks to us through his word. God speaks to us in our heart with a soft, gentle voice. God speaks to us in an audible voice because he's a living God. He's a God that rose from the dead. Amen. And he rose from the dead so that you can be restored, my friend, back to the Father, so that you can be forgiven from all of your sin, so that you can be set free, so that you can be set free. Try to think about the Sermon on the Mount. Ask and it will be given. Seek and you will find. Knock on the door and it will be open to you. There was, those are Jesus' words, and they're words of faith, The words of faith. Ask, you've only got to ask our loving Father. Ask him, seek, search out his heart, and knock on the door of his heart, and his heart will be open to you. His compassion, his love, his giving heart will be open to you, my friend. You might be suffering with a sickness that you've had for many, many years. You might be in terrible pain for many, many years. You might be like the, you know, the, the story in the Bible, the parable in the Bible of the woman with the issue of blood. For 12 years, she suffered with an issue of blood. She went to all the doctors to receive healing and her money depleted because it was, they had to pay for their, their treatment then. And the last hope was Jesus. She heard that Jesus, the Messiah, was coming to town. Jesus was coming to town. And she got a passion in her heart and a faith in her heart. If I could just touch the edge of his garment, I will be healed. You see, just touching the edge of his garment, and she was healed. Healed of all those many years of suffering and pain. And we have to touch the edge of the garment of Jesus, touch the edge of his heart by having communion with God, by praying, by studying his word, by talking to our Lord and Savior and saying, Help us, Father. Help us, Father. I believe, I believe, I believe. Help to heal me from this sickness, Jesus. Help to heal me from my infirmity. Help to heal me. Take away my pain. You've got to cry out to God and you've got to have a passion and you've got to believe that he can do all that he says. You've got to trust him. You've got to trust him. The crowds that came, the seen. The disciples, they were praying, they were doing this and that, but that boy didn't get healed. And Jesus was kind of confused. Well, why the heck couldn't they do it? Where, what, where is their faith? Where is their faith? Where is their belief? How long do I have to be with them? How long do I have to keep showing them time and time again that when they put their trust in me, they believe in me, even if it's only faith like the woman with the issue of blood, like as small as a mustard seed, I'll just touch the edge of his garment and I'll be healed. That's all you need, a tiny amount of faith so that Jesus can work with what you've got. But why should he work? If you don't have the faith, then you don't have the trust and you don't have the belief in him. You want to be healed. I want you to be healed. Jesus wants you to be healed. I want all of your pain to go. Jesus, our Lord and Savior, wants you to be pain-free, then start to believe that Jesus and only Jesus can do that. Amen. Start to believe. Build up your faith. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. You can be healed. You can be healed. But you've got to act in faith and belief, believing that Jesus can do it. You might not have any faith in your doctors, which are very good, many of them, 
not, not knocking medical advice, not saying don't take your tablets, not saying any of that, just saying change your mindset, change your heart and start trusting and believing on Jesus Christ and ask him to help you. Cry out to God. He's the only one who can save you. Cry out to our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ, and believe and trust in him that he can do it no matter how many years you've been suffering. I hope this word's encouraged you and uh, start believing right now because I'm going to pray for you. Stretch your hand out to the screen, whether it's your phone, your smart TV, your pad, whatever it is, stretch your hand out now and we're going to pray to Jesus Christ. He's the only one who can save you. He's the only one who can heal you. Are you ready? Have you got the right mindset? Have you got the right belief in your heart? Have you got the hope? that you need and the only hope that you need is hope that in Jesus and that he can do it and trust in him let's open our hearts and close our eyes and let's pray father god you are the one and only true living god and there is none like you father father i just pray for healing now for that one that one listening right now father god i ask via the power and authority of the holy spirit the living god who lives in me i ask father god and I'm seeking your heart, Father. And I'm asking for these people, Father God, that individual who's listening right now, who's in pain and who's been sick for a long time, Father. I'm, I'm asking and I'm seeking your heart, Father. I'm knocking on your door, Father. And I ask that you heal that person right now. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Be healed from your sickness in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. And if you just got healed, then, you know, contact me and, and let me know. Or drop, drop a, a comment in the comment section below this video and I can rejoice with you. And if you're not healed today, then keep believing, keep hoping, keep praying, keep studying God's word. And in God's perfect timing, he will do it. Amen. Remember, we are what we think. We are what we believe and perceive in our hearts. We are what we think. If we think that Jesus can do it, then Jesus can do it. If we believe in our heart that Jesus can do it, Jesus can do it. And even if you don't believe in your heart that Jesus can do it, he can still do it. Amen. Because he is God. He is the living God. And he wants you to have life and life abundantly. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Jesus Christ is the living Word. In the beginning, right back before the foundations of the earth, the Word, the living Word, was with His Father, and He was God. He was God. He was our, he's our God. There are many false idols in the world, but there's only one true living God, and that my friend, is Jesus Christ. All glory and honor and praises to you, my loving Father. And I believe that that person who prayed, who prayed in faith, and who believes that you can do it, has been healed in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Well, thank you, my friend. Thank you. My name is Pastor Gareth Lavelle, and I'm coming live all the way from Cloud Church TV, and I'll see you on the next video. God bless you all and bye for now. Bye bye. Have a good day and a good week and enjoy your healing. Bye for now. Bye bye. haven't already subscribed please do subscribe to this channel it will help us immensely to get the word of god out to the nations